saints and virgins and welcome back to Crown's magical Christmas internet money, Kevin. Happy birthday to everyone. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 welcome back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. And it's actually Elsa's birthday today. And in today's video, we're going to be celebrating it by going over some Bitcoin monthly statistics for the month of January. We'll also, go a little bit of uh, short term time frame stuff as well. I do think that there's actually rather interesting things going on, um, particularly with the monthly returns for January that we haven't really seen in prior months, at least since we started doing this um, around the midpoint of last year. Other than that, I should also let you know that, of course, because it is Elsa's birthday and the holiday season and all of these good things things. There's a sale going on. The sale code is, of course, ELSA, which you can use at checkout for 20% off of any one of the programs or services in the Teachable School in the link in the description below. Uh, again, the code is ELSA, E-L-S-A, as uh, some people um, have <laughs> sent messages about how to actually spell that. It's E-L-Z-A, no, E-L-S-A. And, uh, and yes, other than that, Elsa has received some new English lessons, so perhaps she might be able to do better introductions in the future. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the actual charts for today. We're going to be looking at the monthly returns, like I said, for January. I've gone through each and every prior January in Bitcoin's history, except for actually 2010, because uh, there's not like any price, like real price data there. I mean, I can see that something happened and Bitcoin was obviously positive during that time, but uh, we don't really know how much, so I decided not to include that one. Uh, but technically speaking, it would be slightly better because again that was a green month right here but um, but something very interesting about January, as we'll go over a little bit later, is when the highs and the lows typically come in for the month of January. So first things first, I'll show you what the returns uh, have looked like, both on the on the winning side and the losing side. And of course, the win percentage, or win percentage in this case, just means the amount of times or the or the percentage that January closed positively from open to closure, which was uh, just over fifty seven percent, or eight out of fourteen January is closing positively. Um, so, you know, a little bit better than a, coin, than a coin flip right there. Um, even in, you know, whether it's a bullish market or bearish market, January was kind of, it was kind of always, uh, you know, hit or miss for closing positively or negatively. Um, so it wasn't like a big, you know, a big uh, obvious thing to be kind of gearing um, uh, these stats towards for January, uh, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, for the last few months, I mean, it's been working out incredibly well, um, except for, I mean, December could could probably be better. Uh, but then again, we still have a few days left, I suppose. Anyways, uh, the average win return for the times that it did close positively was just over 23%, with the median coming in at about 16.35. On the other side, the average loss return was about 16.5%, and the median loss was about uh, essentially the same, actually, um, a little bit less than that. So let's just blindly apply these numbers to a prospective closing price for December, aka a, the opening price for January. And let's just assume it's going to be somewhere around here. You know, Bitcoin just barely closes positively, uh, which would be cool, I guess. Um, of course, to the upside, 23% puts Bitcoin where? That puts Bitcoin at 120,000 bucks. So, you know, this is another way that I like to use or, or try to gauge these statistics is that do the returns match up with like any sort of major targets? 120 is a major target that we've been having on this channel for Bitcoin. Um, so that actually does kind of make sense. Uh, of course, on the other side, if Bitcoin were to play out the downside of these, 16% to the downside would put Bitcoin where? Low $81,000, $82,000, which is very interesting to me because that's also kind of, you know, the bottom side of the range. Now, I've been saying mid 80s, so, you know, perhaps you get a wick down around there, that's fine. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I, I'd, uh, I'd still be cognizant that uh, we're not really getting like a, you know, an obvious indication either way here for January just yet. And when we go through the data even more, um, of course, well, it's not happening anymore, so we don't care about that. Um, when January, uh, you know, even after a green December, because I always like, try to look for things, you know, that are just maybe a little bit left of center, but uh, but this still like no no obvious um no no obvious uh tilt as to whether you know bitcoin's going to close positively or negatively for january if december closed positively because every time that we have seen december close positively um which was actually not that many times by the way but when that has happened you know it's been 62 and a half percent um 
uh, probability that January will also close positively as well. Uh, now, I would say that when Jan when when December does close positively, we can see that the average win return is actually very high for January at 34.5%. So that's significantly bigger than what we did just see, of course, for um, for just the raw stats right up here. But you know, again, like it's we're not we're not really getting like a, a really obvious uh, favor in one direction or the other. I mean, slight positive fav favor there, obviously, but not super super strong. And then also do the same thing for just a green fourth quarter. So it doesn't need to be green December, but just a green total fourth quarter. Um, what does that mean for January? And again. Uh, found nothing of, of of significance here. 54 or less than 54% of January's would close green after having that, but that's not really like... It's not, I mean, that's basically a coin flip. Um, but again, the average win return here, very fucking high, very fucking high, uh, even higher than the prior one at 41%. Anyways, what I've also gone ahead and done is I've recorded the Bitcoin January lows and Bitcoin January highs. We'll focus on the lows first. I do think that that's obviously more, well, hopefully more relevant as we'll go over. Might not be actually, um, but uh, but in this case, we can see that four Bitcoin January lows typically coming in earlier on in the month when the macro trend is up. That typically happens around the first week, actually quite similar to this path month to December. If you remember for December, that number was about three spot eight, and we've seen the low of December on the 5th, actually. So very, very close there. So this one, um, you know, on the 7th, so I guess good. In fact, the only time that we've seen it really close deeper within the month was actually last year uh, in 2024. Um, uh, I, I do remember Bitcoin had that big correction after coming off of uh, almost 50,000 bucks all the way down to like low 40s, something like that um, is when that low was put in. And then, of course, when the macro trend is down, that number goes deeper into the month, which which does make a lot of sense, just intuitively speaking. Um, so, you know, if we do see Bitcoin make new lows, you know, after the third week, especially of January, it's like, I mean, at that point, you already kind of know uh, that things are not good. But, um, but of course, you know, we can start to use the average returns as like a guide for where things like the close around for the end of the month. Of course, when we go to the Bitcoin January highs, this one's super interesting to me actually, because uh, we're getting we're we're getting an output here that is significantly different than than any prior month that we've seen um, over the past four to five months now, uh, straight since we've been doing this data. And again, the Bitcoin January highs actually on average are coming in almost at the exact date as the lows. Okay, so that's already fucking weird. Uh, basically, this one's 13 days and this one's about 12 and a half days. When the macro trend is up, we see the highs come in not that late within the month, actually. A few times we have seen it come in, you know, around the last uh, the last day or two of the month. But if we were to take an average of this, that'd put us around 16, uh, the 16th. So kind of relatively early, at least in my opinion. And then, of course, when the macro trend is down, that number is very early on within the month. So what can we glean for this? Well, this is actually probably the most important data right here. If we are going to see like a major correction, we expect that high to come in for January, probably within the first week of January. Um, and so if Bitcoin, you know, just <laughs> nosedives from there, it's probably a good indication uh, that it will be a negative month. So it really does matter what happens in the first week. Um, you know, does Bitcoin kind of put in a base and rally? Okay. Probably it's going to be a green month. If Bitcoin does not, if it puts in new lows, um, especially by the end of the first week, I mean, because this this number is coming in like very very early. Uh, well, <laughs> downside obviously is going to be the name of the game. Anyways, um, that's it for the monthly statistics. There's my little bot in the background doing its doing its due diligence, doing its work because it also works on Elsa's on, on Elsa's birthday. In fact, everyone's working on Elsa's birthday, including Elsa, because. I'm so generous. I gave her half of a day off. Amazing. Just amazing. Anyway, anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, back into it right here. Um, you know, I did want to go over this full hour setup or sorry, the, it's not really setup. It's more of like a full hour, uh, I guess, fractal relationship here that we have been seeing where Bitcoin has been playing out these upside moves over the course of seven to eight days and then downside moves, um, you know, following that for about four to five days. These have typically come in, you know, a uniform percentage, uh, uh, gain to the upside as well, you know, around 15% into the downside, losing about 10%. This, this most recent one, about 15%. Now, we have been on this channel um, suggesting that Bitcoin was going to rally off of this region close to or above 100,000 bucks. We did see 
almost 100,000 bucks last night on this tick right here. I think the high price was 99,909. So uh, pretty damn close right there right around the 50% retracement level, I should add as well. Um, so that is, you know, a common pullback reach. And I would still, I would still err on the side that while, you know, Bitcoin probably does have a little bit of short-term downside here, you know, there could still be uh, another, another attempt prep somewhere around this region right here. Again, this is like your traditional bear trappy region, but um, you know, I don't want to understate the significance of Bitcoin and what it did in this past, uh, in this past week, was it this past week? Yeah, it was this past or this past couple of weeks where Bitcoin did put in its first lower low on the daily time frame um, since this rally began, which is significant. It doesn't mean that the trend is always going to reverse just from that but that is obviously a precondition for any any sort of trend trend reversal meaning that it is now possible it is now possible and how do we get a trend reversal confirmation well if we have if we already have a lower low then a lower high would do it as well and at that point i would i would say uh all of this data over here is very likely to trend towards the downside meaning that uh, we do see bitcoin in the probably mid 80s something like that maybe maybe in the low 80s as well i guess definitely possible uh possible here too but um you know just be aware that that that, that can happen uh i know a lot of people are looking at january is like a super bullish month the data does not show that uh i think that's quite obvious like if you've actually gone like people fucking parrot all of the dumbest shit just because they like what it says rather than like they actually verified what it says and one of the parrots that i've seen is january is always good for bitcoin it's it's really not it's really it's really not actually i'm not saying this this coming january has to be negative but uh the setup is there the setup is certainly there um, so yeah, anyways, uh, going down into the lower term timeframes here, like the four hour time frame, we do see that there is, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say that there's potential. There basically is hidden bearish divergence on the four hour RSI. We do see that the RSI here on that tick to 99,000 bucks was higher than what we saw on this high right here from the 18th of December when Bitcoin was trading at $105,000. Again, my line in the sand for Bitcoin, uh, just blindly being bullish with targets probably like 120 maybe beyond, uh, is Bitcoin moving and closing back above $105,000. Until that happens, expect a prolonged correction and 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 understand that this thing can come down into the mid, maybe even low 80s. Uh, it's not out of the question here. It would still, it, that does not mean that long term the bull mark's over or anything like that, uh, but, but it does mean that, you know, Bitcoin could be in for like a 20% correction, um, which has been the flavor of the cycle correction for the last couple of years, um, you know, 20 to 25% basically. So uh, Bitcoin, you know, from 108 down to 80, that's, well, that's your 20 plus uh, percent correction right there. Anyways, um, yes. Okay. So we've got that. We've got that. Uh, also stochastic momentum on all of our higher term timeframes is looking like it might be once again in concert daily time frame while having a slight twist to the upside yesterday. Uh, preceding that run to 100,000 bucks or, or almost 100,000 bucks is now going to show a potential turn back onto the downside. And I'll explain a little bit in a second why I think this is very, very likely to happen. Um, assuming that today does close below 97,400. If we go to the two day time frame, it's already nosediving, of course, and it remains down as long as Bitcoin's below 106. If we go to the three day time frame, also nosediving as long as Bitcoin's above, uh, below 106. Five day, also coming down as long as Bitcoin's below 103. 10 day time frame, which just closed last night, by the way, um, is also down to go below 103. So we see essentially all higher term time frames in concert here. You know, Bitcoin probably does test a little bit of downside, uh, I suspect. Um, I mean, I, I would expect like at least at minimum, you know, somewhere around 95,000 um, bucks. And then, you know, <laughs> could Bitcoin come back down and retest these lows here at, at 93? I guess definitely possible. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyways, Okay, we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. Yeah, last thing I'll leave on right here is also the daily HPDR. We can see that uh, the meeting on the HPDR was above 100,000 bucks yesterday but has moved down significantly as soon as today uh, opened. It is currently at 98,450. So Bitcoin's trading almost 2,000 bucks below it right now. It's not, it's not like a huge move for Bitcoin to be fair, but assuming that Bitcoin does remain below there by end of day, pretty damn good indication we will see Bitcoin back down around the lows of these last couple of weeks, perhaps somewhere around 93,000 bucks. Does Bitcoin make a new low? 
possible, yes. But as we went over actually in the prior month statistics, which I'll go over right uh, just in a moment here, um, we typically see the, the December lows. So the low of the month coming in again very early on within the month, especially during macro uptrends, which Bitcoin obviously is in right now around day number four. Thus far, we've seen the low at around day, uh, not around, but on day number five right here, or sorry, right here. <laughs> very, very close. But yes, uh, this one was lower. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it was indeed lower. So the fifth is still the low. Um, you know, is it relevant to to think that December will trade below that low? You know, already understanding that this doubt over here has been pretty fucking, pretty pretty fucking on the money, um, if I do say so myself. So, you know, probably not is what I would say. Probably not, meaning that Bitcoin likely does not trade below this month's low uh, to finish off this month. But you know, it could come down to ninety two and a half thousand bucks, and I mean that's basically the low. Uh, so, um, you know, if Bitcoin is going is going to have a move down to the eighty thousands, uh, very likely happens January if it's going to be happening at all. And of course, like I said, a big key, the big key that I want to um, focus on on this channel in January is what happens in that first week. Does Bitcoin kind of set in a base and move up? Okay, that starts to look a lot better, um, at least with that data in mind. And of course, if Bitcoin just immediately starts going down <laughs> um, and the high is put in, you know, in the first in the first few days and you see the first week even close down, uh, that's going to be a pretty damn good indication that, uh, you know, January will be at least testing some downside and probably closing negatively as well. So, yeah, that's where I'm kind of at right now. I do understand that it's still kind of a quiet time here. So, uh, so we'll, 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 we'll continue to update, um, and prepare for this new year. That's where I want to get a little bit more louder on this one, just cause, uh, I do suspect that there's a lot of fun things happening, especially with Bitcoin doing something like this right here. It's actually doing some difference for the first time in quite some time, but ultimately the consolidation still more or less intact um, as far as the uh, as far as like the long term picture goes. I mean, Bitcoin could come all the way down to low 80s, even even upper 70s, and it still is going to have higher lows on any time frame that matters for macro trend. You know, even the weekly right here, the 21 expansion moon average is coming in around 80,000, 81,000 bucks. Um, so, you know, these are not like super out of the question or anything like that. And, you know, the next higher low is ultimately an opportunity. What happens to altcoins during something like this? Um, again, you know, I do generally think, holy shit, that Bitcoin dominance is actually looking uh, pretty powerful right there. I do still think that it's likely topping within this region right here. Um, so perhaps, you know, Bitcoin remaining within this range, Bitcoin itself remaining within this overall uh, major range here, you know, is a good sign that all coins probably, probably do well um, during that time. But when Bitcoin leaves the range, well, <laughs> you already fucking know. Anyways, that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video, a little bit longer than what I did uh, intend for. I apologize about that because I do understand it is still holiday time. So you should probably be with your families, probably should be doing something uh, more important than looking at magic internet monies. But I'm glad that you are here nonetheless. And as always, I'd like to wish you the best of us. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.